of 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. Who knows, who knows it? All scripture is given. Inspiration of God. They are profitable for doctrine for 316. For reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. We be <laughs> refresh for the last many Now we should of earth. Amen. So all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And they are so they are profitable for doctrine. For teaching for God. Today we are looking at the glory of God, the manifestation of his glory. God bless you. The English language uh, is finding the seeking of glory. There are deceived greatness and splendor and expectation and That is what English tells us as glory means. But scripturally, glory that is who God is. And God is glory himself. He has glory in himself. He does not have his glory and he could not be God without his glory. Can I have it? Could not be God without his glory. That is why he says in Isaiah chapter 42 verse 6 is that my glory I will not give to another. It belongs to him. That is his glory. The glory of God is infinite which means it's unlimited. You cannot add to it. You cannot take away from it. You like praise God from now till it that will not change who he is. He's not going to increase his glory. He's not going to deduct his glory. He's his glory. He's a, that is who he is. He's glory. God is. He gives you everything you want. Give you his love. He can give you his blessing. He can give you his riches. As a matter of fact, he gave himself to us. But the one thing he's not going to give is his glory. He says, my glory I will share with no one. Remember, the scripture says that God created man in his own image. Right? And God put man in the garden of Eden. And the scripture tells us in John chapter 3 verse 16 that man fell and became what? Huh? Who knows? John 316. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Have eternal life. And the scripture says man fell short of the glory of God. Okay. So man man falls short of the glory of God. So God created man, gave God, gave man everything. Authority, dominion. Uh, now, man wanted to be God. Thank God is okay that you must not eat out of the fruit of the tree of life. And he said, No, he said, every other fruit we may eat, but this one we may not touch. So there was only one rule, only one law that God gave man don't touch the tree. Every other thing. You are free to do. Because you are created in his glory, in his image. So you are expected to be in dominion. But when Satan came and 
Satan deceived man, and man touched the tree of life. God said, no, 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 you have gone too far. My glory in you, I share with no one. Because I have done this, who are going to leave the garden. So God drove man out of the garden, and he protected the garden so much, he placed a cherubim and a flaming sword to guide the tree of life, lest man go and touch it. That is to tell you how jealously hide his glory. So, it's very important. Glory is important to God. And prophet Isaiah says in um, 43 verses 6 to 7, says, God says, everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory. So everyone that is called by his name, he created for his glory is a good news. God created you for what? His glory. The glory of God is wonder. The glory of God is wonderful. And God says he has created you and I for his glory. He says, these people I have formed for myself and they shall declare my praise. They shall declare my glory. I have formed them for myself. So the good news is this. God formed you and I for himself, but not for ourselves. So, if God formed you for himself, that means you are God's responsibility. God will ensure that you are glorified. Because whatever touches you, touches his glory. He said, the scripture says, you are the apple of his eyes. That is how much God loves you. For him to leave his throne in heaven and to come on earth and to die, to shed his blood for you and I. Why? Because he wants us to be restored back to the same glory. That shows you how much God cares for you and I. God does not joke with his glory. And the scripture says, he has formed you for his glory. Which means, you are the glory of God. If God does not joke with his glory, it means that God does not joke with you. Whatever touches you, touches him. We have an high priest who is touched by whatever touches us. You follow it? That is why the scripture says in Isaiah 8, 18, it says, I and the children whom the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Signs and wonders mean glory. We are made for the glory of God. Since we did not make ourselves, and we are not made for ourselves, therefore, we must ascribe the glory that is due to God, to him. Did not find us, he formed us for his glory, which means he wants us to live for his glory. So we have to give him the glory. No one should be self-centered. I am not responsible for myself who are not responsible for yourself. Therefore, there's no reason for anyone who ever, who knows God, to be self-centered. It's responsible for you. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of God as Almighty gives me life. Actually, Job says that the breath of life, I mean, the breath of God has given me the breath of God. Which means what you breathe, it's not oxygen. The nurses, the doctors, says we are breathing in oxygen. But the scripture tells us that is the breath of God that we breathe. So if we breathe, then it means God is responsible for your life, is responsible for my life. 
He owns the breath of life inside of me. So whether I live or I die, it's in his hand. Right? Good. If God wills, we will live and do this. James chapter 4, verse 15. When a man talks up tomorrow, say, yeah, tomorrow I will do X, Y, Z. Tomorrow I will go to Barbados. You ought to say, if the Lord wills, we will live and do this and that. Why? Because we are not even responsible for our lives. Therefore, you and I must give God the glory that is due to him. God deserves dignity. He deserves honor. He deserves reverence and exaltation. There was a time that Lazarus was sick. Lazarus was a friend of Jesus. So they sent word to him. They said, Lazarus, your friend is sick. And Jesus Christ said, this sickness is not unto death, but that God might be glorified. And he told Martha, he said, if you believe, you will see. Let your, your be. Let God be your be. What is be? Where are the mathematicians? In any decision that you take, this is where I'm going. In any decision that you take, always make sure that God is a constant. Every other reason may be debatable. God must always be the constant. That is the only way you will not make an error. That is the only way you will not make a decision. That is the only way you can know the plan of God for your life. That is the only way that you can take a decision that will give glory to God. These people have I formed for myself that they may show forth my glory. So whatever you do, whatever decision you take, must show forth the glory of God. If it does not show forth the glory of God, then that is not his plan for you. Peter says, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it to the glory of God. Make sure that God is a constant. For example, let me just give you this example. Myself, a friend invited me to go and see a plot of land. That land was very beautiful, but it was up west. 
And I told my friend, I said, we would have bought this land immediately. I can't forget how many acres I've forgotten. And some acres of land for about $100,000. My first consideration was I sat and I was thinking, how do I get up from this place? <laughs> so I told the guy, I said, you know what? My first consideration is my assignment, my service to God. I know it's, when I spoke to him, I said, me something like that. It did not. He said, it doesn't come that cheap. <laughs> Yes, it didn't come that cheap, but then I have no choice. Because I know that the only reason, the only way I will not make the wrong choice is if I put it first. I consider it first. Whatever decision you want to take in life, make sure that God is number one. I'm going to get married. The man you or woman, you take it off, not all God. 98% you are not feeling right. I'm telling you. You may think that he's the nicest man on earth. Sooner than later, he's going to disappoint you. Sooner than later, he's going to disappoint you. Mark it. A man or a woman that does not give glory to God will not honor you. Go and mark it. Because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. And the scripture says, man, love your wife as Jesus loves the church and gave himself for the church. And Jesus Christ says something. He said, I do not seek my glory but the glory of the one who sent me. That is the kind of a man. If a man does not honor God, if he does not give glory to God, sooner than later, he's going to disappoint you. That is extra. You don't have to pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you want to take a decision, the first question you ask yourself is, how will my decision make God look? Matthew chapter 5 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. So that is the first thing you have to ask yourself. How do you speak, for example? How do you speak? What manner of speech do you give? Do you watch what you say? Do you watch your glance? When you speak, can people say, hmm, this must be a child of God. It must be a Christian. The way you speak is part of the way you give to your Father in heaven. Your light shine. That people point to God and give God glory. Whoever speaks, let him speak as the one who speaks oracle of God, as a representative of God. Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength of God who supplies. Do you do the same thing, the same way, whether somebody is watching or not watching? Everything that you do, it must be for God. In order that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, 29, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouth. Place such as is good for building fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. What do you eat? 
What is your job? Food. It's your job of drink. When people see they say, oh, yeah. this must be a child of God. The way he eats is dignified. I just feel like eating. What do you drink? Whatever you drink, can anybody say this guy must be a believer? Or can they, or would they say, oh, it's one of us? It is good neither to eat meat, nor wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. What do you be at work? All these things give glory to God. And God is watching. At work, are you obedient to those who are your superior? When they ask you to do something, do you grumble? Or do you do or do you do it? He says Ephesians 6, 5, 7. Paul says, Be obedient to those who are your masters to the flesh. And with fear and trembling and in sincerity of heart as to Christ. Not with high service as men pleasers, but as bond servant of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. With good will, doing service as to the Lord and not to men. So even if anybody is watching or they're not watching, how do you present yourself at work? Are you punctual? Do you go to work punctually? Do you get to work on time or do you go to work late? But all things should be done decently and in order. When do you arrive in church? Do you come late? Do you just stroll in as if if it's Monday to Friday, yeah, I must be at my desk by 7 a.m. But when it's church, it doesn't matter, you know. Brethren, all these things matter. And I'm going to show you, I hope I have the time, that God is watching. God is watching. God has interest in how we do things, how we carry ourselves. As long as I walk in, why the prison are still ongoing? That's okay. You know, all I go to church for is just to listen to sermon. I just love the pastor's sermon, you know. That, that's okay. But no, it's not. Whether the pastor is here or not, punctuality. You have to be punctual. All things should be done. If the scripture says, servant, be obedient to your master in flesh. Do all things with sincerity of heart, not as to man, but unto God. He's talking about your master in flesh. Now think about God himself. In other words, if God, if the scripture is saying, make sure you get to work on time. Don't go there late. Do everything in decency. Decently. And do everything in order. He doesn't need to tell you that you do the same thing for his service in church. Because he's higher than your master in the flesh. I hope you follow him. It's a great sin for anyone to dishonor God in service. Worship. The children of Eli, they were priests. People will bring meat as burnt offering for God. But then to 
do the sacrifice, they had, they had to boil the meat. But they didn't like well done meat. You know, they don't like done steak. I like Canadians, you know, I've done, you know. So you know what they do? They would tell their servant, go. Before the meat is well done, to pick the choices. And the people protest and say, look, this is a sacrifice to God. It's all yours. You are a God is not coming down to eat the meat, but we still have to boil it according to his instruction. We have to honor him. They say, no, if you don't give it to me now, I'm going to take it by force. And they will take the choices of the meat. And it, that's all they did. It, it. And God called their father. He said, have I not said that you and your household to stand before me as priests forever? Say, no, far from me. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 30 says, Those who honor me will I honor. God is watching. Meat. So if God is interested in sacrifice of meat, then that means God is interested in you, how you conduct your service and how you conduct your worship. To him. I started the message by letting us know that God created you and I for himself. These people have I formed for myself and for my glory. And if you are not giving that glory to God, it, we are failing. The reason why, imagine, Eno, my daughter, bought a car. The car he bought so that she could drive to, to work and all that. Imagine that every time she goes to start the car, the car will refuse to start. What will happen? She will sell the car. The car is useless. God created you and I that we may give him glory. So he's interested. He wants to see that glory. Let him who stands take heed. So whoever knows the right thing to do and does not do it to him is, is to him is a sin. We do the right thing to do. Things we have to remember God in everything in our service to Him. I am alive for His glory. You are alive for His glory. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living, because we all live for Him. That is what Luke chapter 20, verse 28 says. If you want to check it, it says we all live. To him. In other words, we are alive for his sake. So we have to give him the glory. Brethren, it is dangerous not to give God glory. You need to glorify God so that the truth may be known. Why do we give him glory? Because it is unrighteous not to give God the glory. John chapter 7 verse 18. He who speaks for himself seeks his own glory. But he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true. And no unrighteousness is in him. When we do not revere God, when we do not respect him, when we do not give him glory, the glory that he deserves, is counted as unrighteousness. 
Brethren, we need to check ourselves. We need to check those things that has been mentioned. How do you worship God? How do you serve God? I know I'm speaking to the children of God. We have to check ourselves. I have to check myself. We have to consider how we serve God. If you don't give glory to God, it's like walking in pride. Can we see Daniel chapter 4, verse 27, 29? Is it possible? Can you switch to Daniel chapter 4, verse 29, 29 to 30? He's talking about King Nebuchadnezzar. He was walking one day and he went to the top of his house and he looked and he saw the city was very beautiful. And he said to himself, the next verse, verse 30, then he said to himself, it's not this great Babylon that I have built for a royal dwelling by my mighty power and for the honor of my majesty. And verse 31. And while the word was still in the king's mouth, a voice fell from heaven saying, King Nebuchadnezzar, to you it is spoken. This kingdom that you see has departed from you. Why? Because he did not give God the glory. And you know what happened? The issue is that if you don't give the glory, then you are keeping it. If you don't give the glory to God, it means you are keeping the glory to yourself. In Acts chapter 12, 22, King Herod gave a speech. The people were happy. And they said, what? The Americans would say, what a word. And the king kept quiet. He said nothing. Yet, immediately, an angel struck him dead. Why? Because he took the glory Belong to God. The people said, This is the voice of God, not man. The way he spoke that day was more moving than any speech that Obama ever made. And he said nothing, which means he kept the glory. Anytime you do not give the glory to God, you are keeping that glory. Ten lepers came to Jesus, and Jesus said, Okay, you want to be healed? Go and wash yourself. Then why they washed themselves and they became clean. But only one came back to give the glory to Jesus. The others went with the glory. Acknowledge God. Appreciate Him. Demonstrate to Him that you are acknowledging him. That is why we pray each morning. Lord, we are gathered here this morning just to acknowledge you that you are the God Almighty. The reason why you come before him on a Sunday like this, one of the reasons is to acknowledge him. Your coming to his house is to, to give him glory. And I thank God for you that you are always punctual. You're welcome. Let us do something more. 
On Tuesdays, we have anointing service and digging deep. If you're at home and doing nothing, God sees. If you have good reason for not being here, God sees. You're coming together. You are coming together. It's not for any man. It's just to acknowledge him. To give him the glory. God is watching. Can we please see Daniel chapter 4.13? God is watching. I want to tell us something about Nebuchadnezzar. 4.13. He saw a vision. He said, I saw in the vision of my head while on my bed, and there was a watcher, a holy one, coming down from heaven. Verse 31, 31 and 36. So God is watching. 36. At the same time, my reason returned to me. And for the glory of my kingdom, honor and splendor now returned to me. Anytime you keep the glory, you know what? Most likely, God will take the glory himself. Nebuchadnezzar was a king who became an animal. Till today we talk about a God who is able to turn a, into an animal and an animal into a man, to a king. Isn't it? Does that not give him the glory? Anytime he gives the glory to God, he takes it himself. That is one of the dangers of not giving him the glory. I think that was a that was a time someone say she couldn't come to church because of her children. And the man of God says, Oh, okay. So you are now telling God that God made a mistake by giving you children. Said, no, I can't come to church because of children. But God children. And God says, I want you give me the glory. And you say, no, I'm busy. Oh, it's because of my work. No, you don't understand. It, it, it's so terrible nowadays, no? Of course, I, I understand. Because for the last two weeks, I drive up from Mississauga to this place. And sometimes I put on WhatsApp, I say, it was a long journey. But thank God, I made it at last. Brethren, this is where, what I'm talking about. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And for diligence, it's not by your definition. It's not by definition. No, it's not. It's God's definition. God sees, watches. The danger of not giving the glory to God, it may lead to discipline. And God will only discipline That is what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. God disciplined him. It was good that God was watching and God spoke to him. Because you know what? The dream that he heard, and I saw a tree. The only one that was watching down and said, now nah, cut the tree. Make nest on it again. But leave the the stones. When I read that, I was happy. You know why? Because there's hope. There's hope for a tree that is caught. Because that's a time. It will grow again. 
That is why I knew that God returned him back to the throne. God only disciplined him so that when you know how to give him glory. There are certain things in life sometimes that we and most of the time is an interim. It's because God loves us. It's because we are giving it the glory. God gives him the saying, Well, sorry, I can't come to that woman. Smiling. God gives me a new job. I say, Lord, you know, then I used to work nine to four, but you know now it's nine to five. And I know you understand. Understand. And some we lose the job. We start crying to God, Father, please give me a new job. And if I give you a new job right now, you won't have what I'm doing. And if I return you higher, you won't give me the glory. But if I let you understand what I'm doing, if you feel the pain now, and when I return to the truth, you will give me the glory. Peter said, I said, My return to me. So I lost my return. Why? Because he kept the glory. And for the glory of my kingdom, my honor, my splendor, counselors, nobles, resorted to you know, by the one that sent him to the bush. Did you read it? Sent it. They said, oh, the king, we don't want to be on our throne. Now they return to him. He said, I was restored to him. I led. Majesty was added me to him. He said, I only love you. Less because I know where I'm taking you. And when I restore you, you will know how to to worship me. From the bottom of my heart, this is my plea. Let's take God seriously from this house. The grace of God is upon this I want to myself, but I will, I will tell you this morning I was thinking about it. I saw a wise man. This man is our friend. He's a member of the trustees. He does not attend here. He's my, my friend and I invited him to be a member of the, of the trustees. Yesterday we had a meeting. While others were busy, the first thing he did he took the budget that was um, prepared by the finance. I don't about that finance. I don't see the numbers. <laughs> I see the total, but I don't know who is paying what or who is giving what. And he looked at the events we had last year. And he told me, he said, next year, 2018, I'm taking care of this. When I told him, but they asked me to tell you. I said, don't worry. <laughs> they asked him. This guy is wise. He's doing well. He's tapping into the grace of God upon the house. He does not him, but he recognized that grace. He lost time, and by the God giving other, he became a controller. It was, an, it was, it was a plus, an assistant controller. For, I, think, I think about a few months, 
the contract just said, I'm resigning. <laughs> Why are you resigning? The guy just went and they just pushed him up. Giving glory to God. He came back yesterday. What he did was to give glory to God. He did not tell me, but he came to say, Thank you, God. I've told you his story before. His story is very simple. When he lost his job, he came to me in the office, and while I was while I was seeing him off, the Spirit of the Lord just spoke through me. And I started praying, just praying for him. And right on the stairway, right there on the stairway, because it was the stairway, he just knelt down, and I was praying for him. And I take this as your vacation. Because you need a new job. If God loves us, he will discipline us if we are not giving him the glory. And the glory is not just saying, I thank you. It's the way you worship him, the way you serve him, your commitment heart. And I thank God for the members of this house. You are all committed. Amen. Yes. And by God's grace, he says, you may be fooled instead of being fooled. It was what happened to Nebuchadnezzar. He was fooled by his achievement. He saw the achievement. Then he became fool. Instead of being fool of the grace of God. That is what John three, John chapter three, verse thirty says. John said of the Lord Jesus Christ, I decrease that you may increase me. God loves the humble because he gives him more grace and he lifts up the humble. John chapter 3 says, but I must decrease. So the irony, the irony is, he's lifting him learn to give God the glory. It may lead to dishonor. Paul Samuel chapter 2 verse 30, that's okay. He says, those who honor me will I honor. And those who dishonor me I am lightly esteem. That is God. He's the God created you and I for his glory. Any time we give God the glory, he increases us. I've told you times that I looking radiant. It's because of me. Don't leave me. Well, you see her, you say you're doing a very good job. You don't want to see my wife and they say, you know what? You see his wife. I don't think he's even taking care of. But when you say, oh, no. what a man. Sister Man? True? Sister B. Is you now? <laughs> yes, now is it not true? <laughs> yes, now <laughs> you are doing a very wonderful work. It's you. <laughs> You're looking back. <laughs> oh, sister. Good. It is well. <laughs> When the sun is doing well, 
He saw the glory of the, of the father. When the wife is doing well, it's the glory of the husband. When the husband is doing well, it's the glory of the wife. God wants to take glory. That is why I know he cannot leave you, he cannot forsake you. That is why I know that God cannot leave you. Because if he says he has created for his glory, then of it, glory of God upon you. But then, you need to know how to give him the glory. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Shall we pray? Shall we need to pray? To pray. Need to pray. You are going to make the declaration yourself. Lord, I know that you created me for your glory. Please, Lord, let my entire being bring glory and honor unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. The reason for which you create spirit. You deserve glory, Lord. Let my entire being hold my wife, my children, work, my business. Let Be let the glory to you in the name of Jesus. Be unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. I will bring glory to God. Your light will shine. The scripture says, Arise, glory of God is on you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.